We're stupid roadies, so we've never experimented with suspension seat posts or suspension stems before, despite them being really popular in the world of bike touring. In today's episode, we're gonna try out both of these on my road bike and see what happens. Speak for yourself, I'm not a stupid roadie. Yes. At Sea Otter Classic, Francis met a guy called Eric, who I believe is actually the founder of Redshift. Francis wanted to try some silly things on his road bike, as he usually does. Silly? So now we have two seat posts, two stems, a computer mount, and some weird little plastic bits that I have no idea what they do. They look more like earplugs than they do something to do with a bike part. Both of these products allow you to add suspension in places where you wouldn't normally have suspension on a traditional bike. They're very easy to fit fairly universal. They'll fit a lot of bikes on the market, especially if the seat posts, I think these come with different shims. So you can actually fit a 27.2 seat post into a frame with a bigger diameter seat post hole. Products like this have been particularly popular in the world of touring where bike rides might be extremely long, multi-day, and you want as much comfort as possible, but maybe not with the complexity of a bike that has suspension built into the frame. There are multiple companies making products like this, particularly suspension seat posts, and they really vary in price. You can get super cheap ones from Decathlon, which I think we're gonna try and get hold of, right up to the more fancy stuff that we have here from Redshift. So there's two options that we've received. The red boxes, which are the standard ones, and then the black boxes, which are the pro versions. The pro versions are about 60 pounds more expensive than the non-pro one, each one is. With the stems, it appears that the biggest difference is weight. There's not much else difference between them. Uh, the pro one is about 15% lighter, according to the website. And with the seat posts, the biggest difference between them is that the pro has less travel. It refers to it as race tuned travel uh, and it's a little bit lighter so my gut instinct is actually that the non-pro seat post is a better offering because it's more versatile and i think that's the one that we should fit what on earth is that it's like what alien juice where does that go it's literally like little plastic blocks in blue Ectoplasm. That is very odd. I have no idea what this. I have to say, I've had to skim over the instructions and it is honestly mind-blowingly confusing. We should probably do what we always do, which is just put it on and see what happens. Snug. Ooh. <laughs> oh, it moves a lot. It feels like a flat tire. You know, like when you haven't got enough pressure and it's a bit like blue, blue, especially in big tires. Oh, that's, that's weird. weird. <laughs> you know what, Jimmy? Maybe I think we should go outside. Maybe some pedals? <laughs> so we're out here with the road bike. Jimmy's on my gravel bike. And we're gonna do the switcheroo, some gravel lanes, some road, and see what the deal is. So far, squishy. Your saddle height is changing, obviously. Maybe too much. Well, it's going to change more for me as well, isn't it? So there's two ways to adjust this seat post. There's a preload twisty bung that goes in the bottom and that adjusts how tight the spring is inside. So you can micro adjust with that. And in the instruction manual, there's settings based on how much you weigh. In addition to that, if you are heavier, there's an additional spring. That was a spring we had in the box. And you put that inside the bigger spring, which is always in there. And then it makes the system really firm. Uh, I think out on the road here, we're going to be able to adjust it slightly and uh, find the perfect amount. Because so far, I mean, it's, it's got sag. So me just sat on the bike, it does move. It's phenomenal. It's really good. I can't believe how good that is. You that were flying was, down a, like... on a road bike down there. Was... The camera obviously never picks these things up, but it's quite bumpy like this is a, a real muddy gravel track with steps, roots steps. and steps and stuff like that on a road bike that would normally be not very nice i think i've just learned something that i never knew was a thing i think a bike is good off-road if it's comfortable not based like i don't think it like look they're literally slick tires and there was like no grip issues there was no like i wasn't even thinking about what i had to like what lines i had to take it's about comfort isn't it and that's what big tires give you is they give you that like softness that really a mountain bike gives you that means that you can ride in really weird places arguably you only need all of this tread for loose 
surfaces. Well, I guess I guess you'll notice it when you're like cornering rather than just like riding along a trail like sure comfortably or if it's like muddy or whatever but that's amazing you don't really notice it and that's what i'm surprised at when you're riding it on the road or off-road i thought i was going to be like boo, boo, bouncing around all over the place but you, you don't it just kind of just absorbs it it's really good i honestly thought it was going to be the biggest piece of shit ever <laughs> and i hate that it's really good i want it now sadly we've got to send it back to eric do we have to eric you haven't had a go of it off-road yet all right let's go Honestly, it's really good. You don't notice it, do you? No, I, I, I like the seat post more than the uh, stem. I think the stem, firstly, it's less noticeable, but when you do feel it go, it feels like your shifters are, because where the pivot point is, look at that. It's, it feels like they're tipping very far forwards. And I don't really like that feeling. The seat post, if, if you were doing a sportive, anything with cobbles, or if you live somewhere with cobbles, that would be amazing. Got some bad news. We've come to Decathlon to get the cheap suspension seat post and they're sold out, not only in store, but also online. So clearly, it's one of the greatest seat posts ever made. Um, I'm upset we haven't been able to get our hands on one. I've never seen you so sad. One of our concerns with this setup is that it affects your bike fit. The position of your saddle moving significantly or your bars over a long period of time, or, or perhaps in some cases a small period of time, actually might be really bad for you. 67 centimeters, 68 centimeters. There's about a centimeter difference with the saddle all the way down. Like that's a lot, isn't it? Problem is you're always gonna be somewhere within that range because there is sag. So sag when you sit on the saddle and you're not going over any bumps, you're still lower than you would be when you set up the seat post initially. I mean, I did speak to James about this, Bike Fit James, and he wasn't sure. It all depends on the length of rides you're doing, and I guess without doing multiple 200k rides on this versus the exactly the same setup, it's gonna be hard to know. If you're gonna be doing 10 mile rides on this and you're commuting, then probably you're not gonna have an issue. More testing required, but I do like how it feels out on the roads and the gravel tracks. The Pro One only has two centimeters of travel, whereas this is three and a half. So perhaps that is an argument for the other one, that presumably the distance that it does change your position is not as much. A safer option, maybe. But two centimeters is still a lot, so I imagine it's still really comfy. It's a real shame we couldn't get hold of a cheaper option because as I said at the start of this video, this is a really expensive creme de la creme option in terms of a solution for adding suspension under your seat post. This won't be the last video where we use these products. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. And thank you so much for watching.